Okay, um, let's get started. Um, Barry will be back here shortly. Okay. Uh, so I will uh, call this meeting to order and ask for approval of the agenda. I'd like to make or ask to have two topics added. Okay. First would be the um, West Shore Community College and uh, former Woods building. And the second would be 440 River, which is known as the Pole Pole House. Okay? Right, sir. Is that D&E businesses? New business? New, uh, did you say new business? D&E? Okay. And I'd like to additionally add a Dallas Community College Board of Education for DEF to new business for sidewalk papers. We'd like to increase the budget from $3,500 to $10,000 and we add those funds from the refuse containers. Our bids came in less for that and even more for the dating. So that's going to be out? Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, um, and I will entertain a motion for approval. So we'll motion by that. Second. Second. Comments? All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Any more than one aye? <laughs> I think I was thrown off by the word. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we were chatting, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still waiting for more eyes for, to approve the agenda. Oh, aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Motion carried. Man, that was a tough one. <laughs> um, public comment. Uh, I'm not public, but I will just say that I did get an email this morning from Valerie um, that she has resigned her position on the board. Um, so that we will be uh, posting for, uh, that was at, at large. I do believe it was. Okay. Uh, any other public comment? This, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a lot, of, and we're also uh, here under nine. Catherine and Kelly, have you met Bruce, one of our newest members? Oh, no. Kelly, Catherine, this is Bruce, one of our newest members. They are representatives of a volunteer group called Manistee Magic. Oh, and so this is their third meeting, but they've been updating us on the work that they've been doing in the downtown district. So um, what Kelly just passed out is, some, again, I wanted to know whether to present all at one time or whether to do this in, in the two separate places where you have Manistee Magic. But in any event, what we just passed out, I believe, was the results of the uh, questionnaire. We don't know whether you've already been provided that, but when we spoke with the merchants up and down River Street, uh, we asked them specific questions, and which you can see the responses to there, what they would like to see, um, things that we threw out, and then uh, ways to perhaps address some of those issues. So we thought that you as the BBA uh, collectively should have access to this report that we put together and from that it gave us a starting point so it's kind of where we're, we're coming from now um, so to start with I guess we're going to uh, table the art park at this point and talk about that a little bit later or would you like to do it all at one time it's up to you we can do it later since you're on the agenda too so you tell me I got tons of stuff let's do it later yeah. okay um, all right, so to start with uh, trees. Trees were a really high um, want, if you will, from the merchants that we spoke with. And from that, we have had a number of discussions and have found out that there was a referendum. Now, maybe there isn't a referendum, but that really was addressing trees that were planted. And so we've come up with the idea of having them in pots. Now there's some common conversation about whether those pots can be placed here or there or where else. But we we have spoken with, um, well, we addressed this yesterday in, in the design committee, uh, Jeff was there, 
And um, there doesn't seem to be a big concern about where those trees are actually placed. The consideration seems to be about what's going to happen to them during the winter months with the snow and, and, and the clearance of the, the, you know, the snow on the sidewalk and on the street. So we're working around that. In any event, we have ordered a dozen trees to start. We've cut it back from 30 based upon some of the concerns that people have had. Um, we are providing those. They have been donated to the city. They will be placed. Um, there will be lights in them, uh, which will hopefully make it a little bit more attractive down the street. And I think that it'll make the merchants see that some of their, their concerns are being addressed immediately. So hopefully they will get on board with wanting to spruce up river, uh, their particular buildings and get on board collectively to do whatever it is that we can to enhance the street for tourists, new businesses, and residents. So that being said, uh, we have also uh, been to the Ramsdale and had a meeting with uh, them about the art mural project. We um, have been invited, Al Fry was not there. He apparently is the one who is heading up the art mural project for the Ramsdale that is taken over from Rising Tide. So we are going to be invited to the next meeting with Al Fry, heading in about where we are, where they are, and how we can get some murals up on the street. At this point, we understand that one has been approved by, by a building owner, and uh, they feel that they need a minimum of three to be able to proceed with it, and also funding is needed. So we're there. Um, another concern with the, uh, from the merchants this is a Friday night lights. They they want they want something back to bring the people downtown. Uh, we would like to propose that there is something done, maybe the last weekend of every month. It is a holiday Memorial Day weekend. Uh, that there's you know the end of four of them, <laughs> there are four of them ending up with, with Labor Day. Uh, we'd like to close off a couple of the streets and have it open to. Um, musicians and some outdoor, you know, move some tables out there, a little bit of dining, some, hopefully some artists will, will come. We really haven't gotten that far because we don't have your approval yet to do something like that. So, but, but it is something that the merchants have asked for and we would like to comply. Again, with the idea that they see movement. The big things are being tackled by the city uh, the project at 31 and River, uh, the, the yeah, community college, those things are things that we can't do. But with your help, we would like to be able to provide this as a forum for um, bringing people downtown at least once a month to get a more party atmosphere, or more, more community um, involvement. Uh, we, we are finding that we got a lot of incoming. We're doing a lot of stuff. We have expanded um, at this point to the four with Kelly and I are just inundated. We're on different boards. We're going to all the meetings together and, and we're trying to keep up doing all this stuff. So just to let you know, we have at this point in um, less than two months, a hundred volunteers at this point. We also um, have added two new core members to our group. So um, you'll be seeing more faces because we can't be everywhere. Last thing, um, at least without talking about the art park, is that we have contacted Ohio uh, Bakery and, and talked with a partner. And there is some interest about opening here in Manistee. Um, we've talked to them about the fact that their college is coming and that there would be probably a really good need for something where you can pop in and get a sandwich for maybe a, a lower cost or, or a more accessible takeout, whatever. Um, there are two partners involved. The one with whom I spoke, um, or we spoke, was um, the, the guy who's actually in town. His partner is away. He doesn't know whether his partner is going to be interested in, it, in doing that. He, the one with whom we spoke said that they have better success in smaller towns. They tried in Traverse City and that was not successful. But that he was very much interested, even if his partner may not be. So we're going to continue discussions uh, with 
them unless someone else would like to take that over. What? I was going to suggest you reach out to Mark Miller. He's the economic development director through the chamber. He'd be a great resource. Okay. So okay. just reach out to him and get him uh, you know, all up to speed and he can help you. Okay. All right. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> it's too early for me, guys. Well. So, um, I'll bring it up when we do the part. I think that's, unless you have some questions, please. I had a question uh, about the trees. Do, is the public works involved in, the, I mean, who's doing the watering and stuff like that? Well, that's what I said. Jeff was there at the he was? Okay. Yesterday, yesterday, and we did talk about it. Um, we are hoping that, uh, we're going to go back and talk to the merchants and see who it is that would like to have a tree in front of this room and accept some of the responsibilities for, for watering. Uh, again, part of it depends upon the placement of the tree. These trees, by the way, are um, non-fruit bearing, flowering pear trees, and they are uh, the same trees that are planted downtown Holland. Now, those are planted, but uh, the ones that we're starting with are the eight to nine foot trees. They grow to a maximum of 30 feet and a width of 15 feet. So Jeff was uh, talking about, and Dad was talking about when we talked with him um, previously about this, that um, there may be a necessity to remove them during the winter um, and house them elsewhere. That's all going to be worked out. It's, it's, um, it's something that needs to be done, maybe, but we don't know that yet. The point is, is that we need to start somewhere. We need to have something moving. The people here need to see that Manistee is progressing, that, that there's good stuff happening. And so it's just it's just a way to hopefully light spirits and light this, you know, the street. Yeah. So um, are we good with everything? Are the, are the the trees are a done deal, or it, you, you have funding for them, is what you're saying? Uh, they were a done deal. Okay. Um, I just thought of the last thing, is that we have um, written an email. The gentleman at Morton Salt that we were going to contact has, was on vacation last week. And so it was suggested that we write an email to him. Uh, he was going to return Monday. Uh, this was the uh, letter of introduction of Manistee Magic. We did copy uh, Caitlin and Zad and, and Roger on this, but it's the proposal that uh, Morton Salt allow us, give us permission to use their trademark, Morton Salt Girl, and have a statue, a sculpture erected of her that would be put downtown on River Street. So, that is in the works. Uh, I'm going to follow up with a telephone call. I just didn't want to, you know, people are going on vacation, you don't want to jump on it <laughs> for a day or two that they get back. So that's also in the works. That's it until we get to the other part. Great. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other public comment? Moving on, uh, item for approval of the February 12th board meeting minutes. So moved. Motion by Ed. Second. Second from James. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> Next is approval of the March 2nd special board meeting minutes. So moved. Motion by Ed. Second. Second from Tamara. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the February 2020 uh, financial statements. Okay, motion, motion by James. Support for from FAD. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, executive Director's report. <coughs> I'll mention a couple highlights. The grant that the Chamber, the DEA, and LSAT were putting together for the Consumers Energy Small Loan Development Conference in April, we found out on Monday that our pitch was accepted for the presentation session. So the three, there will be three of us that will attend the conference. It's a 10-minute presentation. 
and we're doing a placemaking activities that are indicated on the MSU site for both our restaurant space and stairwell space leading down to the river walk and kind of creating it as an engaged space where the walkway kind of looks overwhelmed now the public restroom space kind of looks scary. So that includes uh, Lizette's mural project and the Ramsdale has additionally agreed to help us with that. Also includes bike, bike racks and some other place making engagement planting and lighting. So we're really excited about that. Additional updates to come. The presentation is due at the end of the month and then the conference is the end of April. I would add that that's, we were only we were one of only ten communities that were asked to make the pitch. Um, so yes, just I think it's and admirable that we got into that ten. Ten in Michigan. Yep. Yes, uh, there's three awards: ten thousand, fifteen thousand, and twenty-five thousand. So we're we're really excited. It would be a great opportunity, and the funding would go a long way in our project. Great. Major projects that we're trying to do here in the next couple weeks in this next month is an RFP. Well, we've we've completed the RFP for sandblasting and painting. It we received three bids. This was for the trash containers. Yes. Okay. Trash containers and the flower boxes. Okay. We asked in the RFP for them to spell out the best painting solution, and Jeff talked to experts, some additional engineers, and they recommended a powder coating medium for the type of traffic and the type of weather that they'll receive. So it ended up being the second lowest bid that included both that technique and the uh, rest of our RFP standards. But that's why I'm asking for a budget update. When we did for our RFP for the refuse containers, we have to put it back out but we might have additional flexibility to allocate from that project to the San Bastion Painting Project. And then our RFP sidewalk favors, we're gonna, that's gonna be a continual project. Can I ask a question about the, um, the planners? Yes. Um, did they specify how they were gonna be prepped? For yes. Time? Okay. Do you know what that is off, offhand? Not off the top of my okay. head, but correct. And that's what we asked for was a report, a recommendation of storage, painting, prepping, and bringing them back. And, what and then prep before painting. Yes. Okay, all right. Yep. All right. Thanks. And each one of them came back with a different thing, but like we said, uh, or Jeff was asking other engineers and painters just to verify that we were going to be doing the right one. Okay. So that is his recommendation. Our second RFP out is the sidewalk papers. We did it. We asked for three different sections. We currently have it allocated for a certain amount, but the one section is going to be the most amount. And it's the middle section of River Street. So we are going to do, we're going to do that middle section, and we're kind of excited because we do have the funding for that one in this moment. But we're thinking we're going to have to redo sidewalk papers on the West End with our West Shore Community College project this fall and redo sidewalk pavers after our gateway project that's going to be happening in the near future anyway. So the fact that it works out this middle section for this moment, that's what we have budgeted and is we're really thankful for. And then those refuge containers, we have two more weeks out on them. But hopefully we're still looking at May, June erection on the corrals. Two more weeks out for? Um... New RFP. So we did receive some original ones and we both, we had to reject them for different the two that we have received. Okay. And so and then you'll see those in the next couple of weeks or month, those three RFPs, you'll see it draft copies of the Washington Community College Agreement. I'm trying to be really aggressive and try to push these through this this spring and summer and what those look like. We're really trying we're being creative and saying how our public funding is going to be used in this public way and serving some of the concerns that the residents have asked and see how the college can contribute to those. Parking is one aspect, but what are some of the other ones in uh, the Manistee Magic Survey indicates some other things that merchants are looking at and seeing how that can fit into our agreement. And then you'll additionally see information on the bonding for my, my position, the executive director and our charter and our ordinance. It says that there's a bond on this employee 
We currently have an employee dishonesty one, and it's up to $25,000, but we, because the charge specifically says that Fidelity, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct, got, uh, we have to ask city council for what that amount is, and that's, the application was accepted, and it's out for quotes now. The last thing that you'll see here in the near future is the job description for the office support for our position and then the agreement for the executive director. They're pretty similar to the original drafts that we said in the first discussion. The last piece of this discussion is what the draft budget looks like and how much we'll allocate for additional benefits for the executive director's position. So the actual drafts of both the job description and the agreement haven't changed much. We're just waiting on those last numbers. Is there any other immediate questions, though? We do have a annual presentation for the county commissioners next Tuesday. I believe it'll run at 6 o'clock. They've allocated half an hour for the presentation. So I have a lot of catching up to do with them. <laughs> we additionally have our big day of serving sponsorship, volunteer, and project applications out. You can find them on the chamber homepage, so please Please shoot them out. It can be from private, nonprofit, organization, businesses. Anyone can submit an application. And we look forward to starting inspections very soon and having all of our inspections done by May 1st. Any other immediate questions? No. I appreciate it. Okay, great. Thanks, Pedro. Moving on to committee reports. Barry, you made it back. Um, the design committee yet met, met yesterday morning. Um, as I stepped in, I heard Kayla talking about some of the RFPs, so um, we went over in detail the status of all the RFPs that are out, which includes the refuse, the downtown refuse um, containers, the um, painting of the um, garbage cans and the flower planters as well as the street paver level. Um, so on each of those, well, Caitlin, the um, additional items to talk about budgeting on the one. I'm making you a note, we've got three additional agenda items in that. The fourth one is the budgeted item of the same. Okay, list. were those added later? Yes. Okay, so yes. I don't I can talk about them now, but I don't need to like bring up that we need a motion now. Okay, thanks. Um, so I'll start with that. So we have budgeted or had budgeted thirty five hundred dollars to repaint the garbage cans and the planter planters. Basically it's the decorative art iron work on them that um, through salt and corrosion is basically that's okay. The RFP went out to do all of the garbage cans, and if I can find in my notes, there are 18 <coughs> of those and 10 planters. We currently have 50 planters. Um, Jeff Makula was not anticipating that $3,500 was going to cover all 50 planters, so he just put out for 10, thinking that over a period of time we could chop away at that and get them all done. Well, the quotes, the bids that came back for the 18 plus the 10 range between 8000 and 9600 instead of $3,500 that we have uh, budgeted. So the committee is requesting that the board, um, okay, thanks, is requesting that the board um, do a budget adjustment to make that possible so we can get that done by summer. Um, parking signage. Um, you may have noticed that signs are pop popping up around our parking lots in the downtown area. Um, there, what was scoped out and what got implemented differs. So um, Jeff and I had a discussion during the meeting about how we want to move forward and correct that, and I think. We've got a plan in place to, to make that happen. Um, 
some of the signs that are still missing are the ones on River Street that actually point you to the fact that there are parking lots off of River Street. Um, but there are also some issues that have the lots themselves. Um, we talked a lot about um, the downtown art park and uh, Manatee Magics, but they already informed the full board of that at our special meeting, so I won't um, repeat that here. Uh, um, as it relates to the river walk, not river walk, the streetscape paper leveling RFP. So we had budgeted $20,000 for that. The RFP that went out um, basically requested bidders to bid three separate sections of the project. And as the bids came in, and I, unfortunately I think there was only one bid that actually responded to it, but it does give us now a baseline as to kind of what this thing is going to cost long term. And with the $20,000, we can accomplish one of the three, um, and basically the smallest. Division to somewhere. So division to Greenbush? I think so. Um, so the plan is that they're going to move forward with that since it's a budget that item and you know, we now have a bid and it fell within what we have budgeted. And so that should also be accomplished by the summer. Um, with that kind of bid as an estimate, we can really project that to do all of the work, we're looking at $200,000-ish to do all of that work across all of the streetscape in the downtown district. So, is that a quote or an estimate? Um, I don't know since I for the paper level for the paper level. I would think it would be a quote because the that's because the king in on an RFP. We okay. generally get just an estimate on that. Um. We had a presentation from Crystal Young um, with West Shore um, on some conceptual renderings that have been done for the Riverwalk portion of that project. And um, we had some discussions about that, but I think there's, you know, it, it would dramatically change the Riverwalk in that area, what's, what they're proposing and what our contribution could enable to happen there. Um, but Caitlin, Something that occurred to me after the meeting is since those improvements are on the community college's property, our whole bonding issue around contributing to something we don't own comes into play. So we gotta keep that in the back of our minds. So we can't just I'm not assuming that we're gonna be bonding for that project. Well, how else are we gonna get a quarter million dollars? <laughs> are we're saying Thirty thousand a year, and I think we're bonding some of our other projects. You can't do a project like that at thirty thousand dollars a year. It's all they were going to front the money. This yeah, my understanding of college work yeah. for the other contributions, but this is a separate project. My understanding was that they weren't worried about the three quarters of a million dollars. They were going to okay. So they were thinking yeah. of including it all in right. their financing. Yeah. Okay, that's the first I heard of that. So okay then. Um, okay. That oh, do you want to give an update on the pitch competition that you or you and Stacy had mentioned? Yes, I just did. You did right. Yeah, okay. thank you. Uh, never mind. Um, okay, then I think that's all. Any questions on what the design committee is working on or doing? The typical things that we do this time of year to get ready for summer, including flowers and baskets and banners, those are all happening as well, but nothing unusual there. Any questions for Barry? Thank you. Uh, do we have anything for business development? I'll report real quick that we had a really healthy business development committee meeting two weeks ago. But just recently, and we kind of reallocated the focus of the committee 
and we came up with four specific goals that both reached their strategic plan that ends this upcoming year, with goals that we came up in the January 8th strategic plan meeting, and what our intentions and motivations between our projects and projects on the business development committee. And those business goals include business development, first reallocating or looking at the programs that are within the DBA and how those can help or what we need to do to adapt, adapt them. Our second one is business retention. How can we support our merchants and break down barriers to help them stay here in NRC? Our third one is entrepreneurship. How can we make Spark an engaged event and how can we bring those types of support year round? And the fourth one, being a public relations resource and a level of appreciation when they make investments. As a, when they can put this type of new project, invest this new money into their business, how can we be a support to promote that and encourage them and let them know that we appreciate what they're doing to change our culture downtown. I wanted to throw that out there that the business development is really taking a re-look at how they're organizing themselves in the new direction they plan on going forward. Great. Thank you. Any other old business? Item A, allocating legal time for Project Bloom Agreement for cleanup, placemaking, and community engagement, summer 2020. Manistee Magic is leading the conversation for cleanup, placemaking, and community, develop, community engagement initiatives on the Project Bloom sites for summer 2020. With the DDA support, Manistee Magic would like a legal document addressing the expectations of the summer projects and the res responsibilities of the property owners. Are you looking for something else at this time? Um, not really. Uh, Kelly, did you pass out the, the proposed yeah. letter? When, I, when we talked about the legal document, we don't really need a lawyer to draw up something that is going we don't, to give us permission to work on this guest property. What we need is, is her permission. And we have drafted a proposed letter uh, that we would like to have Dave Greeby, Kelly's husband, and the cousin of the owner send to her. Uh, it's, it's a, um, where's my copy? I think you can read it there, but it's just basically a letter authorizing the redevelopment of the Art Park property owned by, and we put that in, we're gonna have to get the address, I don't know what the address is, we might have the last names of the owners, but um, Kelly said we have that now, <laughs> anyway. Um, so the authorization includes the removal of the objects now existing on the property, the redesign and revitalization of the park, incorporating some of, or all of the following, it includes planting, seating, a play area, lighting, music, and new art structures with the understanding that nothing will be permanently placed on the property. We really think that that kind of covers the whole gamut of what it is that we're looking for. And since we are looking to get started, our goal is to have the park cleaned up and hopefully as pretty as we can make it by tight line for the troops, which is in the middle of May this year, this early. We have talked with uh, one of the uh, garden clubs and we've talked to a couple, a couple of other landscape people who are presenting ideas. We also have the um, drawing that was in the MSU proposal as, as a guideline. We're looking to make it more interactive, um, prettier, the posters that are currently up there are going to come down. We are trying to contact, what's her name, Rhonda? Rhonda Herbal. Rhonda Herbal. Uh, to find out if she has any desire to keep them while we direct them to whoever it was that originally did them, but uh, they are going to come down. The, the park needs to be more a desirable place to, to go. So uh, that's our plan. Uh, again, we hope to do this by the middle of May, have it done. We may not have it all done by then, but we hope to have a good portion of it done so that we are, we are welcoming our guests to come for Tightline of the Troops and any other uh, visitors that come to Manistee in the meantime. Um, I have a question and a comment. Um, Number one, it, what, I, what I know 
some of what you plan on doing there? Is that, are you running that through the design committee? Well, we, we don't have the actual drawings or proposals at this point. Barry is aware we did talk about this yesterday. Um, and, and of course, I think everyone knows that we do have the approval. Uh, they did, where was that city council? I don't remember where, where we told everyone that. Uh, but we did, they spoke with the owner of the art park, who is his cousin, and she does want to retain the property, so it's not going to be something that we purchase, but we have her implicit authorization to go ahead and revitalize the park in any way that we see fit, as long as it's um, not going to be anything permanent placed on the property they want to retain. And we do have plans that are being submitted to us. Yes, from, that's what, from various from the landscape. And that's all I'm asking is if, it, if you're keeping our design committee up to speed on it. We won't it, that's, do anything without you. Right. That's what I, I just want to make sure that was the case. Right. And then my, that was my question. My comment is, personally, I would feel better if we just had George Saylor, put, or the city attorney, take a look at this really quick. And really then, quick is, is uh, there are the operative words for this, because we do, we do want to get in there and start cleaning it well, up. Yeah, if I can interject real quick, I, what that is like, because I agree that you want to really quickly get in there and get this done, but I'm on the side of it still needs to be a legal document in some, some way, because we definitely don't want anything coming back in the city. And if you're in communication with this with this person that owns the lot, then she should be more than willing to sign a legal document. So I would mirror what that is saying. I, I, we don't mind it as a legal document, but, but we're, we are coming at this so far up to when Dave made this call. All attempts by the city to have anything done with this park, they were rejected. Um, it's because of the way it was coming at them. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this legally binding but soft so that she's going to feel like we are reaching out to her as a member of the community. They do plan to retire up here in Manistee. They want to be part of what's going on. But I don't think they, they want that push from you know the government saying, so yeah, I, I agree with you. We need something that will stand up. But I also think that the softer we make it, well, the better. Yeah, and my suggestion would be that, that we, the, the board just authorized Caitlin to work with the city attorney to draft an appropriate document. And I think you understand it's got to be kind of soft. And then if she's comfortable with it, send it out to them. To well, did we, we passed out the, okay. So the proposed letter, I, I think that from what it is that we proposed, you get the general sense of we're trying not to be too um, forceful. So if you can propose that and any you know changes or we're we're willing to, to look at the modifications or whatever as long as it kind of keeps the same tenor that that is in that. And we also need it quickly because we are trying to get the troops together to at least start cleaning it up. Yes, yes. just a couple comments. Um, the first is we're talking about a piece of property that's private property. That's correct. So you really don't need the DDA's approval to do anything with private property. However, but we still want it. Well, I know I understand that. However, there's two things that you probably do need approval. Well, one is you need approval for, and one that I want you to think about. And that's not DDA related, but it's historic district commission related. So I would strongly recommend that whatever your plans are, that you get the historic district involved because you don't want them stopping you saying what you're doing is inappropriate for the historic character of the district. Well, I would, I, I would just, I don't even know if that's a historic district site. It's within the historic district, so. Does that only apply to buildings, though, or does it apply to I, that's, I don't know yeah. those answers. That's why I talk to someone in the historic district to make sure that you're not creating a roadblock for you on the road just because you don't know what the steps are. If you are. want something, relatively quickly on that topic, go, go see Mark Fetter at the museum, because he's the, the liaison to the Historic District Commission. Okay. And he would give you a quick read on that. Okay. You know, my position is, it's not a building. I don't know that it's designated a historic property within the district. So 
I think he can give you a quick down and dirty opinion. Okay. Good. The, uh, the other thing, though, I think is important, and that is because it's private property and the nature of these enhancements are to get people to use the property, you need to think about liability. And currently, that all falls onto the property owner. So, has the, it always been on the property? No. no. So, the original agreement for the stuff that was there there was a agreement with the city that the city would basically ensure that as part I'm of sure it she's gonna want that continue. right I my understanding is that that agreement has expired okay. and that is probably a legal document that the owners are really going to want in place because they don't want to accept any liability for, for what's going on there so you know, I just thinking that that's something you need to be thinking of, and it probably makes sense to dig out the old agreement so that that you know language it could just be renewing that agreement. But my understanding, and this is before I was really involved in things, is that it was like a dollar that the city got, and then they basically but they said never received. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it just. I that's think, just something I think that needs to be thought of is making sure that okay. there aren't any surprises like that down the road. I, I, do, I do remember that transaction, and I think it can be as, I would hope it'd be as simple as redoing that. Okay. Uh, it, may not be, it may not be required to create a new document. Uh, well, we do have time in the sense that, you know, the park is not going to get the money, but we are looking at, we're trying to get, you know, drawings, concepts, and, and so forth in place. So it's, it's a, it's something that is in the works. The part that we're kind of anxious for is to get in there and clean it up and get some of the stuff that down yeah. so that we can start moving. One, one question I have is the current assets, there's not a lot, but like the picnic tables, who do those belong to? I don't know, but I think we are going to have some sort of seating in there, whether we use what's currently there or not. It's, as this letter said, some, some or all of the following things. So. Um, we are evaluating that again based upon the proposals that we get from the uh, garden clubs and from the landscape. Have you so. been successful in talking to Rhonda Herbal? We can't get can't get her. Okay. I've got uh, calls out to try to get her. Okay. If somebody has a better phone number, maybe than what we have um, our contact, that would be great. But so far, we we can't get an answer. Okay. Caitlin, do you have sufficient guidance? I've got three tasks here. Um, I have a art park binder that has news clippings, and I believe I have some <coughs> distribution. Has what? I have an art park binder in the office. It has news clippings and it talks about the project, and I believe it has some contact information. So I'll give that to you. Okay. See if that's any different. Um, we're gonna connect you with Mark Miller right. from Economic Development, and then we're gonna look up that. City of Bellevue and insurance agreement. I believe it was up for seven years, and I think I talked about that and George about it before. So they may have a copy of two, that. Two corrections. Mark Fetter. No, no, Mark Miller. Mark, Mark Miller. That was on an earlier conversation. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. <coughs> and, and, You're, and work through the draft agreement with George? Yes, and he is aware of it. So he's started putting something together. Here, can we have something really quickly yeah. on that, please? Um, we were talking about the week. The purpose of him, me talking to him earlier was excellent. That's what I was shooting for. I told him we were talking about it today. And you're on the Historic District Commission. I am right? really, uh, yes, appointed. Uh, so if you if you want me to go down and hang out with Mark or either hang out with Kyle and I get the planning. planning to Kyle, with you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let me know. And I'll go down with you. Okay. And we can okay. learn about the project together. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Caitlin. I have a question. Have you tried reaching out to the tribe for any anything for that space at all? Either at all? No, we haven't. No, we haven't. Um, only because we don't know what we would be reaching out for at this point. Uh, it, it, <laughs> we're still, you know, just getting this off the ground. Again, we just received permission to, to be able to do this. And, and I ask because, of course, the tribe has this arrangement for that gateway there with American Cleaners. And right. so 
I don't know if you intend for any sort of historical aspect in that space with the tribe. It's just something to consider. I can set up a hello introduction. A hello would be great. Um, sit down face to face would be great. We we were hoping, and, and again, this is still very early on, but the Morton Salt sculpture, we were hoping if we get the permission that that might go in, in the um, art park. So that's not a fait accompli. We don't know whether they're going to allow us to do it, whether we're going to get any funding from them to do it. We don't We don't know a lot of things at this point. All we know is that we have a lot of ideas and we're out there reaching out wherever we can <laughs> to try and make an impact. Yes, Barry? Just kind of going off of the previous comments is, and since you mentioned the Morton Salt sculpture, um, I think that the tribal and tribal community there is an outreach opportunity there to incorporate some of their historic um, aspects into this as well. And I'm sure they might consider helping fund it as well. Like, So I don't think Morton Salt is the only opportunity. Oh, I don't think it is some, either, but that is, that is where we kind of envision that would go. Um, again, the design is still kind of just, oh, we want, you know, we want it to be more usable, more more family friendly, more whatever. So um, and, and less scary, frankly. I mean, that's all we hear: scary, scary, you know. So we're trying to, to make it something that, that it isn't, and um, we're in the very uh, dramatic stages of that. So we're welcoming any ideas. But by the same token, we're still collecting information too from, from other sources. So. Thank you again, Thanks. also for your enthusiasm. Thanks. Um, new business. The presentation of event work plans for this round of event proposals, the following has submitted updated plans for the executive director's communication and review. Each work plan includes the chairperson, committee members, event date, and anticipated expensive expenses. 2020 events include hops and props, uh, Victorian Sleigh Mill Parade and Little Christmas Weekend. 2021 events include Spark Dance. There are work plans in your packet. Did anyone have any immediate comments or questions? The only question is: Is this is this something new that they're submitting to us, or is this something that they've done? These are in the past. They've updated them in February. Children of the board have been working on that. They, put, they have their chair together. They have their committee together. This is what their timeline kind of looks like. These are kind of the budget items and helps us plan if they had any budget changes so that they know they would have to allocate those in the beginning. All three of our committees are doing a great job. All three of them are going through some dramatic changes. Um, Hops and Crops is changing of committee members, and both Old Christmas Weekend and Spark are changing of their chair. So in the, in the midst of this process, and you can see the amount of work they put into these work plans, we are coming <coughs> up with a standard process and consistent documents for PDA events in general, and working with all the three committees to put those together, and those include sponsorship contracts, this work plan outline, a step-by-step -step document to help us all look at the same thing and know what we're looking at when we're viewing it. Um, they, they did put a lot of work into this. They're all three of them still feel like they have a lot to do, but they're, they really are putting in the time and energy to get this together. And I'm, there isn't an event at this time that I'm concerned about getting set up in time. Uh, Spark does not have a date. Um, Valerie let us know at the last meeting that she would not be cheering Spark for this upcoming year. So that one we do have to put some more thought into committee members, chair, but she does have a binder together and has the event kind of set up for the next person to take that role. Do you need any formal board action at this time? No. Let, this is just an opportunity for the board to ask any comments or questions. Like I mentioned, I'm going to have some formalities and consistent documents with them that you'll see in the near future. 
in the planning process. So if you had anything else. Thank you. I, I just want to comment. Um, thank you for your work on gathering and facilitating this because what you said is these have been submitted in the past and technically I think that may be true, but I don't think they've ever been presented to the board in a fashion disorganized for us to really understand what's going on. So this is great, a great step forward. Thank you. Okay. Item B, approval of draft Manistee DDA budget plan meeting. The City of Manistee deadline of March 24, 2020 for inclusion into the city budget. The Manistee DDA has prepared a draft budget including project from the City of Manistee Economic Development Strategy, City of Manistee Housing Plan, Development and TIF Plan Amendment, and a strategic planning meeting from January 8th goals. This budget communicates to City Council the Manistee DDA's participation in their upcoming budgets and support the initiatives written out in the dedicated plans. I didn't receive any additional comments after our other's last special board meeting, so this is a reflection of that discussion. My only comment is, I, I, unless I missed it, I didn't see anything in here about if we're going to bond, you know, costs associated with See that. I didn't put it in this fiscal year. Okay. For my understanding was that our conversation was it would be the start of that. We were going to look at that process this year to set it up for next year. Okay. All right. And then how do we get? Do you have recommendations to get to a balanced budget, or are, is the board comfortable with taking that amount of money out of fund balance? Any recommendations? Well, oh, I'm sorry. I saw the revenue and it wasn't in there last time. I'm sorry. Okay. So I, I guess I question on the revenue. Is, are, are those the numbers from it? Yes. So a decrease? Yes. Okay. Because 
well, I've never gone through a bonding process, and I'm still assuming it's not like overnight. Um, but I think we should be trying to incorporate any fees associated with that process into this budget, such that if the funds are available next year, for us to then you know, make a bigger impact next year. Um, because if we don't allocate funding for that, we're really pushing everything out a whole year and not even getting started. Because without funds to actually do the bonding, we can't really do the bonding this year to have funds available for next year. So that's just my thought. Let's, yeah, let's, let's ramp up our efforts on the bond. Yeah. Have you had additional conversations with Ed on that process and timeline? We've talked about it. My understanding was that we were looking for it for the next year. Yeah. But yes, I can bring that to the next board meeting. I'd like to have a special board meeting to have that discussion and approval. We're looking at a take timeline for this, and I want to be respectful of City Council's request for this for this process. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. But again, I keep coming back to where we're going to cut out 150,000. Well, I think, well, so as it relates to the weather <coughs> project, do you have in here any payments basically for that project to accommodate? Which item is that? Suggesting we eliminate it completely, but we just don't include it in the budget at this time until we get our bonding and see how that impacts our budget. There's any more about no. it? Just, I, I guess, hold it until we go through this whole bonding process to see what we can do with those dollars 
in, in our budget. So, you know, we might be taking on a, we might be bonding and how can that be worked in, into our payments? And that's all I'm suggesting. I'm not giving up on that position, but it's just, in my mind, it's a timing situation. Yeah. <coughs> Well, so, so there are elements here, uh, a lot of elements to the budget, and we're contemplating a bond. Some of this is a presentation issue, right? There are things that we want to fund uh, through bonding, and there are things that we can fund right now. I mean, am I, am I not understanding this? No, I think you're correct. It's a presentation issue, and, you know, you can think of a cut as a cut, but we're I don't think anybody's talking about cutting projects or cutting positions or anything else, but there is a presentation issue. Which side of the ledger are we going to put things? Are we going to put it under the bond funding or are we going to put it under you know, current funding? Could move some items in lieu of bonding. Yeah. Right. Is that what you're suggesting? And, and that's, he put it more eloquently than I. <laughs> that was my intent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, Bruce. <laughs> I appreciated the life-saving efforts. Again, right. yeah, a, a couple other thoughts just in looking through this that I think we could um, eliminate or reduce. Um, I'll start with the item that's called downtown maintenance. Um, this year, we're essentially um, allocating $20,000, which is what I talked about earlier in the RFPs just came in, we're getting a block done. I think given the state of the budget, I would recommend that we keep that level um, at $20,000 instead of increasing it to 40 as the TIP plan indicates we should be striving to do. Um, so I think we can take 20 from there. Um, my next comment is the intersection enhancement <coughs> projects. I believe that is basically gateway project, if that's what you mean by inter that intersection. Um, to me, that's something that can wait until the bonding is um, set, because the nature of that project isn't gonna be 20,000 a year over a number of years. It's gonna be, we're gonna wanna do something it's going to be wanting to be rolled into the other project and we're going to need all of the funds up front. So I don't think we need that 20 in this budget. That brings us to 157.5. That we just cut out. Hypothetically. Okay. Which is what we need. We need 147. Dominic. So I, I'm thinking that we can actually keep part-time position that's what these other ones throw off and then what, what's our current fund balance you know Caitlin no it's tough is it on the it should, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it was part of it's around 200 yeah. yeah I would I guess if what did you say we were at 157, 157 five, with, with removing the part so time. then we would go yeah. with the part time yeah so okay. if we eliminate that we're down to 130 and then that would indicate that we would be using about 18,000 a month balance. I mean, I could live with that. I don't know how the rest of the board can. So that was 40,000 for the Riverwalk, 50,000 for West Shore Plaza, 27,500 for part time staff, which originally we talked about, 20,000 for downtown maintenance, and 20,000 for the intersection. Right. Add back in the 27,500. Yep. And then it's roughly the net would be about 18,000. Dollar uh, reliance on a fund balance. Do you need formal action on that? Other than I would like to have a special meeting to review this again. I don't think we need formal action. I think it's just moving numbers. <coughs> All right. But can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I just, it, it's a, again a presentation issue. The justifications that you were giving for why why those amounts, I think, are really important. And, and if we could footnote 
uh, those items that are moving over so that we remember what the justification is on the document. I think that would be really helpful. Kelly, do the minutes reflect those comments? So. Okay. <laughs> Caitlin, you would like to have another meeting just to yes. give formal adoption of the budget? Would that make the board feel more comfortable? Or? Well, I mean, this, I've seen different wording around this, but just understanding the budget process, this, we're essentially providing input on a draft budget that's going to then get rolled into the city's draft budget which will then go through further discussion at various levels I'm comfortable today just adopting this with the changes we've described as our draft budget knowing that that still provides time to make tweaks and to make some final things realizing it's now part of a bigger process and we just can't arbitrarily like make significant changes and then council's going, well what just happened? I, um, but I, I don't I think there's opportunity to make changes. I know, but I, and I understand Caitlin's concern and I guess what I would suggest is that you amend the budget based on the rec recommendations that the board has made today. Have Kyle take a look at it and if Kyle believes it you know accurately reflects the the uh, Board's position, then I would then it's good to go. Does that make you feel more comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Did you were you talking about a special meeting also to talk about bonding, or was this this set of issues what you wanted the meeting for? We have not talked about bonding for this fiscal year. Hence it not being in this draft. And you wanted a special meeting. I to talk about the bonding process or, or just the or, or I just want the board, board to feel confident that the draft that I'm turning in as a representation of the DEA is what they want okay. it to look like. And if they want to formally adopt that before presenting to City Council, I want the board to feel comfortable with that. When is the presentation to City Council? Our deadline. We have to have it in by I guess the twenty seventh, twenty eighth. March and then um, that's when it goes to them and then the first presentation will be the first meeting in April. Okay. So we have do we have one more meeting between no 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 we don't okay. You know one thing that we we haven't included in this budget is the bond bonding cost. We talked about but we didn't throw that in. I, I, I don't have a I don't have a clue as to what that might be. We kind of do from the development and TIF amendment process. Okay. But do you remember what that was? It was around forty to fifty thousand. Well, yeah. if we're going to add those in, we. <laughs> so we're going to have to look at another forty thousand. Hold on, or fund balance. To them, if we're looking at about 18, we're talking about 18, and then just say 45, so we're looking at 63. What would that get us down to? In terms of a deficit? No, no, in, in terms of fund balance. If, if we go oh. in another 60, what did I say, 63? Well, what it is? I mean, the, the problem is, is anticipating where we're going to end this fiscal year. Right. Because again, if we follow what our budget says, it's going to be, it should be zero. Our fund balance? Yes. 
the budget we adopted last year was designed in case the DDA sunsetted to basically use up any funding. However, there are at least $150,000 that I'm anticipating that we're not going to be doing. Um, but I haven't really sat down and thought about that. That's the first I heard that we were looking for zero out of fund balance. That's why last year's is 187000 negative. Wow. It's pretty hard to rely on fund balance if we've got a zero out. <laughs> so currently, you know, with four months left in the year, we've got $320,000. Really starting to look at realistically what is going to get spent between now and the end of the year. I think we, we need to do that to understand where we will end the balance. Well, because you know things like <coughs> allocated fifty thousand dollars to buy the RFR property. Obviously, that whole has changed, so that frees up fifty thousand there. And there's a number of those things, but you've not made an attempt to kind of forecast out where you expect fund balance to be at the end of the year. So, if we're saying we should be tapping into fund balance. I think we probably need a little more information. We need to we need to put brakes on it. If we're gonna because I don't see a real easy forty or fifty thousand to tap out of our proposed budget. Not we not given the changes we've already talked about today. But if we're if we're at, we're at like fifty seven and a half um, in the fund you know, and if we're not gonna spend the fifty on property acquisition from there. Well, we're close, but that's assuming we don't do all those other 150 or so thousand or 200 thousand. Okay. And you know, some of the big things that are out there that are going to get spent include the garbage corrals, it's, well, unless the second round of our piece <laughs> has some issue like the first did. Um, the paperwork, the 20 there. So I mean. There's going to be that 320 is going to come down. Or it's just where to? I, I, I don't know right now. Well, I, have to, I, I don't know. I think it's obvious. Or it's been made obvious to me that we need to take a look at our current budget and what we're going to do through the end of the fiscal year, so we retain fund balance. I mean, if, if we adopt this and we're looking at. Fifty or sixty thousand dollars. Know, we got to have that fund balance. I mean, more than that, the saving grace is we could always put off bonding for another year. So, I would be comfortable if you know using that fund balance as long as we understand that we have to look at our current budget and then find things to eliminate and make sure we have fund balance. Not only enough fund balance to cover our projected deficit on the draft, but enough fund balance to, to make us feel comfortable. And to that point, it is current board policy that at a minimum we maintain 20% of our anticipated revenues as fund balance, which would put us around 50 to 60,000. Right. So, yeah, we should be thinking that's the low point of our fund balance, and then working from that. How does the rest of the board feel about that program? I mean, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's there's time to react, are we? Right. Okay. As long as we all understand it, that we need to do something. Okay. I'm comfortable. changes to the draft budget, put it in, put those changes in, and have Kyle look at it, and if Kyle feels that it reflects the discussion today, then we're good. Right. I'm good with that. I think it's efficient. Yep. 
And I'll, I'll have to put it in the stock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the part time position staying in. Yes. Correct. And it looks like you have this rough figure maybe about sixty to sixty-five thousand dollars reliance on fund banks. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing like fifty-seven and a half. Somewhere just now. Does that give you enough guidance? Okay. Great. Uh, item C. Letter of support, support letter for the City of Manistee application for the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Trust Grant for the North River Walk Park. The City of Manistee is applying for a grant to support the development and infrastructure improvements of the North River Walk Park. The project will support the goals and objective, objectives of City of Manistee's five-year park and recreation plan and will have public comment during the public hearing at the City Council meeting on March 7th. The city of Manistee has committed matching funds in cash and or forced account for the local match of $123,000 or 30% for the grant for the project estimated to cost $287,000. A support letter from the Manistee DDA supports our efforts to increase public relations and increase collaborative efforts discussed at the January 8th, 2020 strategic planning workshop. So we're just looking for a letter of support. That's it. No financial commitment. Okay. I'll make that motion. I'll support it. Okay. Motion. Support. Discussion. Is there? I mean, is there a plan for covering that one hundred twenty thousand dollar match? I, I know we talked about this yesterday at design. Jeff was kind of filling in. I mean, there's there's some. I know a variety of things, but. It doesn't sound like those add up to necessarily to one hundred twenty thousand dollars yet. Is the council is the DDA being looked at as no. maybe providing funding for that? What okay. we're what we're doing is real quickly. The, the city has to come up with one and a half million dollars for shoreline erosion protection. We don't have it. We got a bond, and so staff said, "Well, what other projects do we need to do?" Because it's you know the the cost of bonding is kind of like construction mobilization. I mean, you've got to fix costs and whatever. So anyhow, long story short, we got council to uh, commit to grant match for this project as well as grant match to replace our remaining docks at the marina. So, and, and this, this number is the worst case scenario. In this particular, this particular grant, a developer uh, has committed that once he has all of his financing in place, he would make a $30,000 contribution to this. Um, the JCs have also committed uh, a certain amount of money to it, and they've also indicated they would help with crowdfunding efforts. And then we are also making a uh, request to the community foundation. So that's the worst case scenario, is that, that the city gets nothing and we get to fund it ourselves. Okay. So, all we're looking for is a letter of support and no money. <coughs> I'll write that letter. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Item D, election. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Family. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, some added items to the agenda. Item D. West Shore Community College. That yeah, uh, Senator Vanderwall had office hours on, on here, in, here in the town on Monday. Afterwards, uh, several of us uh, stayed back to talk with him, and it was I learned that he's proposing a one million dollars supplemental funding for this pro this West Shore Community College project. Um, so it's it's in there. He feels very good about it. Personally, I would rather spend state's money on that project rather than DDA money. Uh, so what I think we need to do is at least have a discussion with West Shore that if you get that $1 million supplement, then, then we would withdraw our financial support. And if we can do that, that helps our budget significantly and more importantly, it allows us the flexibility, in my mind, to do other things yes. in the downtown. So 
you know, that just was new information to me this week. Um, you know, I had a very, very quick conversation with Crystal Young to at least plant the seed. And I, and I wanted to come across, and I won't let it come across to the colleagues that we're, we're pulling back on our support. It's just that if you get this, then we can do other things to pull down. So I just wanted to let you know, and we'll walk you the board advice of where that is. But anyhow, um, Senator Van Vanderbilt uh, felt very strongly that he would be able to get that, that supplemental appropriation. So that's all I wanted to Great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, item E. Uh, 440 River, otherwise known as the former boathouse project. Yeah, I, I know that the, the economic development director is really trying to get something going there. He's had a couple uh, leads on uh, people that want to bring restaurants in, and it's it's become an issue because of the condition it is. And I know they're working with one right now, and uh, that might pan out. But if it doesn't, you know, I'm really concerned because that building is a complete gut job and it's just and what's more concerning I'm hearing some chair about people might want to be interested in buying that put it in an office or something like that which I you know I, I don't personally I don't think that's the best use of that property I think at some point you know it wouldn't be today but we need to start talking about how can the DEA take control of that property at some point and maybe you know a way forward becomes a little clearer if we're not doing something with West Shore. And I have some other ideas that um, you know, that we could pursue, and maybe have a third party uh, buy it, and then with an agreement that at the right time we would purchase it from. Them. The other idea I had is is going to the bank, and they've had it on the market. I don't know how long they they had. In my mind, I think they, they have to have had enough time to write off that property numerous times over. I mean, I don't have a problem going to the bank and say, take a haircut on that and let us buy it for something much less and uh, partner with us to try to reuse that property and you'll get the, you know, get the requisite attention when, when it's done. So just some things to think about. Yeah, I have a question about that. Um, it's can you help me understand the river side of that property because I've been told various different versions of who own. Is that the property of the city? Yep. From the, the back of the of the property, of the building. Of the building. So like the patio area. But the deck is that is on a city lease. Property. Yeah, that's a lease. Okay. City council is um, has indicated that you're willing to sell that. I think there, we can't give away property, but I think there might be a mechanism to provide incentives to a potential developer where they would get that virtually for free. Yeah. Where, where it might be something simple as, you know, if, if you open the business, there's X number of dollars, you know. If you employ so many people, eh, there's another cut. If you stay in business for whatever time, there's another cut and get to the point where it's virtually free. So I, there, there, there's options. I feel like that's probably a little wide. No, it's and not. It hasn't been? Okay. No, I offered um, well, probably a year and a half, almost two years ago, the bank to buy it. And they, they didn't want to do it at that time. So. I think right now the issue is more of the condition of the interior sure. the building and the renovation costs. Sure. Is there any issue with any, and I don't know, I've, I've just seen it from my boat, <laughs> but is there any erosion issues on that side no. with the- Thankfully okay. the water gets not go up there. Okay. <laughs> Thankfully. Okay. I like the idea of talking to the bank, um, but even if something were negotiated, we still have to deal with the purchase exactly. right? or the reduced amount. So. And I have an entity in mind that might be willing to help us out. At least I'm going to approach it with that idea that, that we could get through them get control of that property. What do you think it could be some of the properties? A restaurant. They yeah. don't have anything on, on that end of the, of the city. Especially that has waterfront right. access. And, and I wasn't here then, but what I've been told is that was where the voters hung out. You know, that the people from the marina went up there and had drinks, meals, whatever. Now, you know, they got to further into town. And I'm going to ask another question. I'm sorry. Is there any 
transient parking right there. Yeah, that broadside, that broadside dockage is. Okay. You know, we we will the city would make that available if no one else is there. That's another thing that I see from the riverside as I yep. go through there. That man, I wish there was more transient parking so that you could have that opportunity at those the, restaurants. The, the municipal green is very accommodating. It is. Yeah, and okay. there's just there's there's they're not because they're not to capacity they can be. Okay. So, uh, but I think improvements could be made to sign it to so make it oh, yeah. Yeah. obvious that that's yeah. yes. Yeah. It, it, may, could be. it may we you know allocate X number for just you know that transient time. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of comments kind of tying back to budget and number of discussions, and I, I realize there's a number of new people on me, so I just kind of provided some of perspective on things so technically we have currently a property acquisition fund that has about eighty seven thousand dollars and our current year's budget talk, talks uh, talks about adding to that by twenty five thousand so roughly a hundred thousand dollars now again that's part of that fund balance so that may or may not be there but the purpose of that property acquisition fund is to set money aside to do things like this. So, you know, again, that's, we potentially have some funds there, if we don't spend them all for other things this year, that are allocated to that. And also, it is technically a board policy that sometimes gets followed and not get followed, that we stash aside 10% of our TIP revenues to put into that fund to build it over <coughs> time make budgets balance over the last 10 years more often than not we've not done that but again those are policies that we should be aware of and either we follow them or we should get rid of them because if we have policies that we never follow them so they're not the policies the three so. I feel comfortable uh, with that continuing to pursue um, that property whether it be through the bank or private investor I'll work with, I obviously work with Kayla on that. Probably let her take the lead on most of it. Okay. Good. All right. Our heart rolls are coming up with ideas. <laughs> First, to get it done. Anything else on 440? It's refreshing from your day job, isn't it? Uh, refreshing from your day job, or it's the opposite. Exactly. <laughs> um, final added item F. Uh, sidewalk papers. Okay, since we've been talking about how we don't have money to spend, I'm not going to ask that we spend some more money. Um, but with a, a little bit of a caveat. So I talked in the um, design committee report that these um, bids are coming in, and the bids for the painting basically came in much higher than anticipated. We didn't really know last year when we were budgeting. We just threw a number there and said, well, that seems reasonable to paint. This isn't your normal painting because this stuff has to really last a long time and it's really exposed to the elements. Um, so the recommendation that came out of the design committee is as follows, is that we amend our budget, our current year's budget, to increase the line item for this project from 3,500 up to 10,000. And that we trans, we adjust accordingly the line item for the refuse enclosures down by the corresponding 6500 So it's just a line item transfer. It's transferring around because the bids for that project where we've allocated $80,000 came in low, even though they had to reject the bids for some technical reasons. The expectation is that the same bidders are going to rebid to clear up the technical issues such that that low bid that was in that project is what is anticipated, which frees up enough money to transfer over to this project. So it's a net, no impact to the budget, but it's switching money between two line items. Yeah, in concept, I don't have a problem. I would, I would prefer to wait until we get those bids from the corrals, just to make sure. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I will make that as a motion. Condition that had um, added that we not move forward with those expenditures until those bids for the girls have been. Okay. 
support. Motion and support. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Board member comments? I said it now. Yeah, really. <laughs> Chairman? Mayor? Nothing to add. Jody? No, that's James? Bruce? Sorry, way over there. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, welcome, Bruce. Nice to see you. Uh, public comment. Thank you all for coming again. Motion to adjourn. So moved.